What is the Hen Gallon? The Welsh village celebrating New Year in the middle of January. Following a centuries-old custom, a Welsh community in the far west of the country celebrates the New Year in the middle of January. About 300 people are living in the Gwan Valley in Pembrokeshire, which is close to Fishguard. The Old New Year, or Hen Gallon, is observed on January 13 of each year. Rather than using the Gregorian calendar, which is used by most of the world, the group based its yearly celebration on the Julian calendar, according to Bonnie Davies, one of the newsletter's editors. According to the old calendar that we used to have, the new year fell then on January 13 and the people of the Guan Valley decided that they would carry on celebrating on the same day as usual, she said. The tradition dates back to 1752 when the Gregorian calendar was officially adopted in Britain. That's what happens now as children come around singing and wishing us all a happy new year and they'll have a welcome in every place, Mrs. Davies said. Hel Kalanig is the tradition of youngsters singing their way from home to house during the village's festivals in exchange for cash or candies. As part of the Hel Kalanig ritual, they visit houses wishing people well and receiving presents in exchange. In our house, for example, everyone is welcome to come in. The table is full and they help themselves to what they want. They have a cup of tea or something cold, something like that. We're delighted to welcome them and delighted to hear them," she added. Mrs. Davies is pleased the celebrations span all generations. What's lovely about the night of Hengallen is that everyone in the area comes out. From a baby to 80 or 90-year-olds, everyone will come out and socialize with one another. Really important to keep the tradition going. Even people who move into the valley adopt the tradition and get the Dekalanig and things ready. It's important to the area," Mrs. Davies added. A couple from South Carolina found dead in home after heater's temperature reached 538 Celsius. After the temperature in their bedroom was reported to have reached 538 degrees Celsius, an elderly couple was discovered dead. When Joan Littlejohn, 84, and Glenwood Fowler, 82, were discovered in their South Carolina house on Saturday night, authorities noticed that the temperature was only 49 degrees Celsius, even after they had opened the doors and windows to allow in some cooler air. Three days after the couple reported that their heater was not working properly, the discovery was made. According to the police, when the couple's family arrived on Wednesday after they informed them that their water heater and heating system were broken, the relatives assumed the pair had resolved the issue. Three days later, after not hearing from the couple since their visit, the family members called the police. Authorities reported that a paramedic entered the bedroom through an unlocked window and discovered the dead there. The device's highest measurement of 41.1 degrees Celsius prevented the paramedic from taking the couple's temperatures with accuracy. In the police report, it states that they also examined for carbon dioxide levels, which were not too high. The basement heater seemed to be on fire, according to firefighters, who shut it off on Saturday. Police reported that the heater's interior temperature was estimated to be 538 degrees Celsius, or 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. By the time the first responding officer departed, two and a half hours later, the temperature inside the house had dropped to 35.5 degrees Celsius and was operating once more. To find out exactly what killed the pair, investigators intend to conduct more testing and a post-mortem, according to a statement from Spartanburg County Coroner Rusty Clevenger. Rare 70s Star Wars Jawa figurine expected to fetch at least $19,118 at auction. The owner of a rare Star Wars miniature from the 1970s discovered it in his loft. The model is a 1978 Jawa developed by the now-defunct British toy firm Polidoi, which used to make Action Man, Pippa Doll, and Merlin items. The owner, who has chosen to remain nameless, discovered it while organizing the many movie artifacts scattered throughout his home. During the Star Wars campaign in Marvel Comics, the owner, an art director for Marvel UK in the 1970s, was gifted several items by Polidoi. Only 10 to 15 of these figures have been documented, making this one even more unique because it is in exceptional condition and has the original vinyl cloak on display, which was replaced with a cotton cape shortly after it was manufactured. 
Another Jawa figure that the owner had previously discovered went for $33,000 at auction, much above its $12,745 to $19,118 price estimate. The estimate for this Jawa is the same, but it is anticipated to go beyond that amount once again. Auctioneer Jonathan Torot of Excalibur said they were thrilled to be involved in the auction of one of the rarest statues. He claimed that because of the previous original figure's popularity, people looked for one in their houses all over the world, but he never imagined that another would originate from the same place. Mr. Torod added, I feel utterly spoilt being able to handle another such rare part of Star Wars toy history. With their cloaked faces, the Jawas identities remain hidden, but they are renowned scavengers who scour the deserts of Tatooine for scraps to sell to the local residents. They notoriously kidnapped the lovable droid R2-ED2 in the 1977 Star Wars movie, A New Hope. Enthusiasts will get a chance to bid for the figurine on January 27 at Excalibur Auctions. USA Regulator has approved Bitcoin funds, which might spark interest in cryptocurrencies again. Reluctantly, a US regulator has approved the trading of ETFs containing Bitcoins on the US stock market. With the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's SEC clearance, investors will be able to learn about Bitcoin without actually holding the cryptocurrency. The SEC is an independent body whose main goal is to enforce rules against market manipulation. SEC stated that it did not approve or endorse Bitcoin in its ruling and that it remained extremely skeptical about cryptocurrencies. It happened after hackers were held accountable for a fictitious post on the SexX account, which declared the approval of the financial market regulator and thus caused a spike in the price of Bitcoin. The SEC approved 11 exchange-traded funds ETFs, for Bitcoin on Wednesday, stating that this would provide competition and a, a level playing field. An exchange-traded fund ETF is a simple means of investing in one or more assets, such as gold, junk bonds, or bitcoins, without having to purchase individual assets. They may be bought and sold at any time of day since they trade similarly to stocks. Wall Street and the cryptocurrency sector, which has seen two years of unrest and seen the demise of many crypto companies, have gained from the approval. The price of Bitcoin surged in anticipation of the sex action, reaching $45,890 on Wednesday, up from about $35,198 in mid-October. According to some observers, ETFs might contribute to the stabilization of cryptocurrency prices by expanding their potential user base. However, many, including Yanis Giocas, senior director of Moody's Analytics, a financial services organization, are still worried that their widespread usage may expose regular investors to a less well-known risk spectrum. SEC chairman, Gary Gensler, has said repeatedly that cryptocurrencies need more regulation and investor protections. Investors should remain cautious about the myriad risks associated with Bitcoin and products whose value is tied to crypto, he said.